नमस्कार आई एम शो गोयल एंड इट्स माय डिस्टिंग प्लेजर एंड ऑनर टू बी वेलकमिंग अ वेरी वेरी स्पेशल एंड इंपॉर्टेंट गेस्ट फ्रॉम भारत अभिनेत्री ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड इंडस्ट्री पीयू रियली जॉइंस मी एट आईटीवी गोल्ड स्टूडियो हियर नमस्कार वेलकम सच अ प्लेजर एंड ऑनर टू हैव यू हियर एंड एज आई लुक अप द वे थिंग्स हैव अनफोल्डेड इन द लास्ट फ्यू इयर्स स्पेशली वाइल यू आर आल्सो होल्डिंग द चार्ज ऑफ फूड एंड पब्लिक डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड टेक्सटाइल्स so what has happened uh, under your uh, leadership and uh, of course um, with prime minister narendra modi ji uh, guiding uh, the country we have reached to a very prestigious uh, fifth largest um, and fastest growing major economy so let me begin by requesting you uh, to share the top three factors that you feel has worked favorably for the growth of indian economy well i would think uh, the sincerity of purpose with which prime minister modi has led as a decisive leader the fact that there is political stability in the country and the innovative thinking he has brought into india's economic policy india's political thinking the confidence that he has brought into every citizen of india that india is a powerful country india matters and india has a bright future collectively we used to never think of the nation getting involved in nation building he has made every citizen recognize his or her strength he has involved the entire country in every program that he has brought in whether it is swachh bharat which he initiated 8 years ago whether it's financial inclusion and digitization i'm sure you're aware that we did 78 billion financial transactions digitally last year calendar 2022 which is more than europe us and china combined and the entire nation has now started looking up to a better future aspiring for a better quality of life and prime minister modi is right there in the forefront of policy making in building up the confidence of the nation and in giving a direction which i think we have never seen before coming right from the top so we are truly indeed blessed to have a leader like prime minister modi the nation is blessed to have somebody who's shown that the world can look up to india and clearly today he is the most towering leader in the democratic world so before i come to the next question very briefly if i may seek your comment on uh, the way policies are formulated and when we look at the innovative approach of the government uh, with your background of uh, successful chartered accountant and uh, having investment banker and advise all that so is there any place where you felt that uh, your input has been policy formulation to your satisfaction well i think that's uh... the good part of working in a team led by prime minister modi that there's a lot of dialogue there's a lot of openness to new ideas and there's a lot of inclusivity in the decision making process prime minister modi is a very good listener if you have noticed in any meeting in any interaction he absorbs knowledge he absorbs ideas he gets into the very detail of any subject on hand and with his incisive uh, thinking and with the involvement of the entire team around him he comes up with really out of the box solutions to a variety of problems that we have faced for so many decades he thinks at scale he thinks of the government as one entity and has a whole of the government approach he 
looks at the contribution of every single person in any project that he comes up with. And I think over the years, there are so many times that your ideas, your thoughts, any initiative that you have brought to the fore have been picked up by the government. If he finds merit in that, he encourages you to go deeper into the subject. And uh, it's, it's really a remarkable experience. And I have said it on more than one occasion that all that I learned in uh, school and college while doing chartered accountancy or law, or even while pursuing uh, my, my own career path in management, I don't think I've come across better management philosophy and principles of working than working with Prime Minister Modi. You would say that uh, most of us agree with you 100%. And if I take um, a very brief uh, reference to your name, and we are celebrating Azadi Kamrat Mahot, sir. So, I mean, you share this, I mean, we are so And the kind of responsibility that he has addressed in you, right now also, you are holding important portfolios like commerce and industry, food and public distribution, um, and textiles also. And earlier, you have uh, served as railway minister also. Now, uh, switching gears to the focus of uh, Prime Minister Modi on NRIs. And I think we here in America, as well as in many countries, we feel more connected to Bharat than what we have previously felt. And right now, as we speak, he has inaugurated 17th the Pravasi Bharti. They also talk to us about your expectation from um, Indian American community, how uh, they can play a more active role in India's uh, success story. Well, first of all, I can say that uh, driving into Edison, New Jersey, one felt so much at home. I saw all the stores which I'm familiar with back home, whether it's Kalani Ketan or Nali Sari's. I saw so many food outlets and it really felt like a mini India. And the good part about the non-resident Indians, and we have 32 million persons of Indian origin across the world today, approximately, is that while they become an integral part of local communities, A, they're very benign, very friendly, they, they become a part of local culture. They do not threaten any country with a kind of effort to dominate. They're friendly in nature. And they maintain their tradition, their original identity in a very subtle way. So they are family oriented, they have, a, they have the legacy of a rich heritage, traditions, family value systems, culture, which they pass on to their generations, even in foreign lands. And in that sense, I think the NRIs really make India proud. And you're right, uh, I'm, I'm privileged to be amongst all of you as Pravasi Bharat Devas is being celebrated back home. And uh, we are remembering the day when Mahatma Gandhi came back home in 1915, after nearly 20 years as a Pravasi Bharatiya. And I, I'm, I'm delighted that the legacy that Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee started nearly two decades ago continues with even greater thrust and focus on the NRIs. I think all of you do us proud with the good work that you're doing all over the world. I hope you will continue to work with India, engage with India. You will continue to bring back technologies, bring back tourists, bring back trade uh, and investments back home to India. So you really are ambassadors. You're really, the NRIs are people who reflect what the strength of India is, what India truly is. And I think as more and more of the world sees your success, they will recognize the potential that India holds. I think uh, particularly the American NRIs have done a fabulous job 
in terms of their own performance and successes in the United States of America. And I think you really act as a bridge between other countries with whom we would like to expand our business, trade, technology, investments. And this living bridge that you represent is India's strength. I think that those kind words and I'm also uh, finding it quite relevant to share my joy that uh, I'm talking to you at IDU Gold Studio and the chairman of IDU Gold was also recognized for his contribution as Padma Shri as well as as Pravarti Bharatiya Samman and there are others, uh, community members who have also found themselves more intensely and closely uh, working with India. Uh, moving towards uh, your uh, present visit as well as uh, the uh, status of Indo-US uh, trade relationship. Um, in USA is becoming the largest trading partner with India is the news uh, that we are getting. And I think there are, must have been some unique initiatives by Indian government and your negotiation skills are also appreciated uh, on several forums. So talk to us about what is it that India is doing differently or in a different, with a different approach which brings uh, Indo-US trade to the state. Ashokji, of course, US is our largest trading partner. But more importantly, we are two friend, friendly nations, two important and large democracies, two countries who are very aligned in their thinking about the world affairs, about world economy being open, rules-based, transparent. We are two countries where we have a lot of flow of technology and investments on both sides. A lot of management and technical skills are provided to the US economy by Indians. The United States companies are now looking at increasing their involvement in India, having India in their supply chains as a trusted partner. And uh, whether it's the geopolitical space, whether it's economic and uh, financial world, or whether it's the people to people connect. In every respect, I think uh, the relations between the US and India are expanding in many directions. Going forward, we would like to see much more happening between the United States and India. We have very strong linkages with the government of the United States. I have the trade policy forum meetings uh, over Tuesday and Wednesday in Washington. We would also, with the USTR, uh, Ambassador Catherine Tai, with whom I believe I share a very personal rapport and friendship. And both of us are very keen to expand trade between the two countries. Sometime in uh, end of February, early March, we'll have uh, the Commerce Secretary, uh, Her Excellency Ms. Gina Raimondo, coming into India for the CEO Roundtable and our commercial dialogue. And with both my colleague ministers, I recently had the first ministerial in Los Angeles of the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework, under which also we are looking at a group of like-minded countries who would like to strengthen the engagement amongst countries in the Indo-Pacific. On the geopolitical level, President Biden and Prime Minister Modi share a very, very strong equation and friendship. Our Foreign Minister, Dr. Jayashankar, is truly a star in terms of his outreach across the world. And he has strong uh, friendships with his counterparts in the United States. Rajnath Singh Ji and Dr. Jay Shankar both have been actively a part of the dialogue on defense and foreign affairs. Our uh, very illustrious finance minister, Shumati Nirmala Sita Raman Ji, has a very personal connect with uh, Janet Yellen, the uh, Secretary of uh, the Treasury. 
And in that sense, all of us, collectively on both sides, believe that India and the US have a very important role to play in the world affairs and will continue to lead policy and will continue to lead our efforts to make the world a safer and better place to live in. Honorable, a safer and better world is important for each and every one. And while I'm sitting with uh, Piyush Goelji, I'm also uh, looking at the way uh, there is a consistency and focus um, and continuity of uh, positive energy that is uh, flowing uh, with you as well as of course the branch. And in that context, while we in India are addressing uh, many of our um, challenges including unemployment, uh, so while you encourage foreign direct investment and you are going to be meeting with CEOs, uh, what are the specific key areas that you feel uh, that you would encourage uh, 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 entrepreneurs here uh, to look at in India? Well, I think India is a land of opportunity because we have a young population. We have the rule of law and democracy in the country and a huge demand for goods and services, domestic demand, consumption demand. Investors from the United States, when they invest in any business in India, whether manufacturing services or the like, will have the advantage not only of a large Indian market, but that economy of scale, the fact that whatever business they would do in India would be at such a large scale that it will be competitive, it will be at very affordable and attractive pricing. They'll not only be able to get a large uh, domestic demand in India, but they'll become competitive across the world. So to my mind, any business that requires management talent, that requires technical talent, that requires labor in a big way, that requires skills, or that requires natural resources which are available in abundance in India. For all sorts of businesses, India is the place to invest. A lot of businesses are also looking at diversifying their supply chains. They want more trusted partners. They want countries where there's the rule of law and they can really look at uh, expanding their operations and feel safe about it. And they're looking at countries where there are good returns to be made. And I can share with you that India offers the advantage of all of these. Our stock market, investors, the people who have come in from all across the world to invest in India and our domestic businesses. All of them have been giving some of the finest returns over the last 20, 25 years and will continue to do so in our Amrit Khan as we progress in the next 25 years to become a developed nation where we are looking at inclusive growth, taking prosperity to every household in the country as young Indians are demanding high quality goods and services I think the country offers immense possibilities and investors in every field are welcome in India. We have a very, very inviting red carpet policy. We have a corruption-free environment today in India, something which the world had always looked up to. Very strong and robust banking system, a predictive and stable economic policy framework and a strong, decisive political leadership offering stability, which is very important for investors. So we'll conclude with uh, two small references that I seek your attention or rather input. Uh, one, I'm reminded of Sankal Se Siddhi, as Prime Minister Narayan puts it. And while we are speaking, uh, 12 January is the National Youth Day, and Prime Minister Narayan is very much inspired by Swami Vivekananda. I'm sure you also have... Uh, um, taken some uh, inspiring uh, ways uh, to uh, to reach to your fulfillment uh, by Vivekananda. So, talk to us about uh, what is the National Youth Day and especially uh, the relevance of Swami Vivekananda's teachings. Well, I think uh, if you look at the fact that India at its uh, current juncture when we are 
really emerging out of the shadows to become a world power recognizes that Vasudeva Kutumbakam, the world is one family, really reflects the ethos of Indian thinking from ages. And in a manner of speaking, Swami Vivekanand epitomized that thinking. We have the G20 presidency, where we are, our, our theme is the world is one family, where we are looking at one earth, one family, one future. And to my mind, the youth of India today are very, very empowered. They are getting good quality education. They come with strong skills. The talent is unmatched anywhere in the world. And they have fire in the belly to do more, to work for a better future for them and their families. And it is that excitement to contribute to nation building, which Prime Minister Modi keeps encouraging, which is leading the country to newer heights. After all, amongst the large economies, we are the fastest growing economy. While we are fifth largest today, probably four or five years from now, we'll probably be the third largest economy in the world. And collectively, education and health are going to help us move the economy much faster. Thank you. I would recollect one quote from Swami Gana where uh, uh, he, uh, in fact, uh, Ravindran Tagore mentioned about Swami Gana that if you want to know India, read Vivekanand. Everything about him is positive. And I think that positive approach uh, is very, very important. And as very common uh, example is given that glass is half full or <laughs> half empty. So I think... Uh, Modi government and uh, probably most of uh, you in the team are looking at <coughs> half full. The opposition is looking at half empty. Many times, but the glass will be completely full. There is no, no emptiness left. And as uh, I thank you for uh, joining us here. Um, lastly, just a personal tidbit. You have been so successful as a student, a brilliant uh, academic career. Uh, then, of course, uh, in the corporate sector, uh, you were so successful. Typically, the kind of image which we used to have for politicians is not as smart to look like a film star and uh, who has a lot of options. Uh, what was it that made the sort of transition for you to uh, become a politician? Well, I think after uh, a certain stage, it's time to give back to your nation and to society. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi really inspires a lot of people, and particularly young people, to get involved in nation building, to be a part of government, because end of the day, unless we have good people in politics, we'll really not be able to achieve the kind of aspirations that India has. It's like the computer. Very often, and I remember in our college days when the computers were really new at that time. One of the important things taught to us was it's garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, in some sense, I think if uh, more and more people with uh, a serious intent to serve the nation with good uh, knowledge and background are involved in public life, I'm sure it will hold the nation in good stead. I always believe that politics is the one medium by which you can impact millions of lives with one signature. And it's that one medium with which you can really reach out to the whole country. I mean, the immense satisfaction you get when you're able to declare India as a power surplus country or the satisfaction that you're able to double the speed of freight movement in the country in a short span of time or the satisfaction you get when 800 million people through COVID are provided with adequate food grains. In fact, Prime Minister Modi uh, doubled the food grain allocation to 800 million people from five kilograms per person per month he added another five and doubled it to 10 kilograms per person per month for almost 
28 months at a huge cost, almost nearly $50 billion he spent on it. But it was so satisfying to see that whereas in the Spanish flu, more people died of starvation than the Spanish flu itself 100 years ago. India can proudly say that through COVID, while the rest of the world was very worried how India will cope up with it, we not only coped up with it very well on the health front, on the medical front, uh, we not only produced some of the best vaccines, which held the country in good stead, domestic vaccines with which all of us are benefited and we've had over 200 or, or 2 billion vaccines, nearly 2.5 billion vaccines now, given out free of charge to all Indians, which has made the country safe and secure. But we've also ensured that there was no starvation death in the entire COVID period or even otherwise. And I think all of this, coupled with the fast economic recovery under Prime Minister Modi's leadership, demonstrated to the world the abilities that India today has. And I think there can be nothing more satisfying than that. Absolutely. And I think being food and distribution minister, what you just mentioned also comes under your um, sort of a supervision or in your, uh, what should I say, you you discharge this responsibility and made it happen. And uh, I would be failing if I don't uh, remember Bharat Mata as we are speaking in uh, uh, the month of January, and 26 January, Republic Day of India. As a student, you must have participated in functions uh, which were organized at school. And now as a minister, while you're sitting at uh, the uh, visiting, uh, uh, sort of witnessing the parade. And so what goes on in your mind and what you would be thinking, uh, this would be a very special uh, Republic Day on 26 January this year. Ashutji, it's, uh, it's another feeling altogether. When you're sitting there at Kartavya Pad, and watching the tableaus go by, watching our young uh, persons getting recognized, watching the various cultures of India at their finest, the dances, the patriotism that you see over there, India's cultural rich heritage is reflected. Various states and various departments are showcasing their strengths and their achievements. Uh, it's, it's another feeling, it's another high. You feel so proud of your, of your country, feel so proud of every citizen, everybody who has contributed to making Bharat uh, such a great nation. You feel so proud of your armed forces, all three of whom, the Army, the Navy and the Air Force, have kept us safe and secure. You feel so proud of the paramilitary forces who have uh, protected our citizens over the years. You feel proud today when you see a Jammu and Kashmir tableau, which is finally an integral part of India. You feel so proud when you see the Kashi Mandir reflected over there, which has now been rejuvenated as, as one of the finest uh, areas. And, and you know, I recently went to Banaras and uh, I saw that from a from a time when it was so difficult to even go to the Kashi Vishwanath temple. Today there were thousands and thousands of uh, devotees and tourists at the Kashi Vishwanath corridor. When you see the Mahakal temple, which has again got a new look altogether, when you see the Ram Mandir coming up, which will be ready before the end of the year, all of that reflected on your Republic Day Parade, uh, it, it truly is very, very exciting, invigorating, it's, and, and gives you a new high, and enthuses you, encourages you for the days ahead, for all the work that you have to do. Absolutely. So your pleasure listening to you, I was also transported to the feeling of being one with the spirit of Bharat, and that sustains us here, whether we have taken citizenship of another country, but we were born there and that land continues to inspire us uh, and helps us uh, move forward. Uh, once again, um, grateful that uh, municipal commerce and industry as well as food and distribution and textiles, uh, Piyush Goyalji uh, joined us here at IQ World Studio with lots and lots of good wishes. Uh, I'll also say Bharat Mata Ki Jai in your presence. And Thank you very much, Thank Ashokji. Thank you. Please convey my thanks to Dr. Sudhir Parikh also. 
for giving me this opportunity. And through you, my warmest greetings and wishes on Pravasi Bharti Divas to all my fellow Bharatiya uh, colleagues and NRIs in uh, the United States of America and other parts of this world where you are very popular. My best wishes to ITV and may you have a very, very successful future. Such a pleasure having you here, sir. Thank you, Piyush Gorji, and thanking all of you with lots of good wishes. This is Ashok Vyas. Namaste.